You're listening to Music Tectonics. Hey, it's Dimitri with Music Tectonics at Meetem. I am back and just had some uh, Dr. Falafel from down the road from the Palais and ready to jump in some more interviews for you out there in podcast land. I'm here with Ed Talek from Lenofi, who is a participant in the 2019 Meetem Lab competition. How's it going? Pretty good, thank you. Uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you for having me. And you're in from Paris? Definitely. And first time in Cannes? Yep, really enjoying the sun and the beach. It's so nice, isn't it? So let's dig right in. What does Lonify do? Uh, Lonify is an app that helps anyone, even people who've never created and who've never played an instrument in their life, to create their own ambient music. Basically, the goal is to say um, everybody sometimes has problems falling asleep, is stressed, or would like something to help them relax. And sound can help with that, specifically chill out music. But the sound that will work on you to help you relax can change a lot from person to person. They link to your personal history. And so what we wanted to do is use uh, artificial intelligence to help people create their own environments so that they can have uh, sounds and, and, and music that will really help them, uh, put them in the place they want to be. Wow. And when you say they're making music, is it like they're playing notes? Uh, are they writing songs or is it a little more uh, simple for them? It is much more simple than that. So that, that's where the artificial intelligence comes in. The idea is, as a user, you only need to pick and choose the uh, sound ingredients you want to listen to. You just need to say, I'd like to have some, uh, let's say, uh, bird songs and a, a traditional Chinese instrument. You just select the two. And there is an algorithm that will mix them together, uh, coordinate them, and play in the background. And uh, because we, uh, because the uh, Damiens is created by the algorithm, it doesn't stop and it doesn't repeat itself. So it's going to play for hours or for as, as long as you want it to, to, to play, really. And it never loops? Uh, it doesn't loop. We have we have a finite number of uh, let's say uh, bass recordings, so sometimes they do they do pop up again, but uh, the uh, the chain of, uh, of notes or recordings is not the same. So, what other criteria does the user put in to start creating music? Are there additional um, factors? So it's it's really it's like it's like um, you have several layers of complexity, so you can go as uh, as much as you want. Uh, the, the most the most simple layer is just picking the sounds that you want. So you just say I like some. Um, uh, in this instrument, I like this this kind of birds, like let's say uh, uh, bells as well, and just hit play, and you have something you have something ready. You don't need to do anything more. But if you want to do more, then you can change uh, the frequency of repetition of different sounds. You can change the volume. You can change the reverb, the panning. So you have a, a a comprehensive set of parameters that are available, so you can personalize it if you want. So where did you get the idea for this? Uh, actually, the idea came from a, a research work that was done by my co-founder. Uh, he was working on the question of what makes a sound environment something pleasant in a city. And to design this experiment, they were uh, asking people to create an environment uh, and to rank it, uh, saying whether it was uh, something they liked to hear or not. And the response he had during doing this research work was actually really uh, positively overwhelming from the, uh, from the test subject. And so he said, well, that's potentially something interesting to do here and, uh, and decided to start the company. So he was asking what kinds of urban environments so were appealing to people? So he, he, he's a machine learning researcher, right? And so what he was trying to do is trying to assess how uh, people are emotionally react to sound and, how, well, and what kind of protocol can be put in place to simulate that. And uh, the experience was about uh, designing your own environment and then ranking it saying, is that, a, is that something that's pleasant or not? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, so, so you met him, and or you already knew him? No, I already knew him. He's actually he's a childhood friend. So. Oh, awesome! <laughs> so, childhood friends co-founding this together. Great. And how long have you guys been working on the uh, the actual uh, um, app? So, the actual app has been. Um, we've been working on it for about a year and a half. And how, and how far along are you? We launched an open beta uh, back in February. Uh, it's available on, uh, online right now. You just need to type lonofly.com and then you get access to the beta if you want. And we'll be launching the first version of our app on, on the store, uh, first on the, on the Google Play Store and then on the Apple Store next month. And is that global or by territory? Global, oh, of course. Great. Good, <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, have you, what kind of feedback have you gotten from beta users so far? Uh, we've, got, so we've had two kind of feedbacks. Uh, people love the, love the idea, really. Like we've had a really overwhelmingly positive feedback on the, uh, the concept and on, on the quality of the sounds. Uh, but we've also been told that the creation process, as it is currently in the app, is a bit too complex. So we've changed that in the uh, in the version that's going to be released. So what have the biggest challenges been of uh, getting this off the ground? 
Um, oh, there's quite a, few, a lot of challenges really, but uh, I think one of the things that was hard for us at the beginning was first of all to find the recordings and the sound that we wanted to use, because I mean, really what we're doing is our app is free to use mostly. Uh, we don't have advertising and, and, uh, and so we want as many people to use as possible, but to make that uh, work for us in terms of economics, we had to, uh, to use sounds that were not, uh, uh, that, so that, 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 that were accessible for uh, free or for, or for not, not too much money. So find, finding these sounds was, uh, was, the, uh, was one of the biggest challenges at first. How big is the catalog of sounds? Is there a way to describe that? Yeah, for sure. So at the moment we have more than 12, more than 12,000 uh, individual rushes and they are uh, combined together into about 300 different tracks, um, so simulation tracks that range from uh, animal sounds to uh, pavement road, uh, cannon shots for uh, like American Civil War, if you want to, uh, uh, I think there are probably about 100 different kind of instruments, mostly traditional music. Have you come across any um, any use cases that you didn't expect yet? Oh, so, so many. I mean, I think our business model changed so many times <laughs> in the past year and a half. Uh, but I'm pretty confident. I really like the model we have now in terms of saying what we want to do first is address um, people's individual problem with a perhaps simple thing in life. But like uh, when you're stressed or, or you can't fall asleep, it's that can be a real problem for people. And uh, if something can help with that, I think it's great. So uh, mostly it's it's sleep or calm, chill out kind of thing. Yeah, or, or like a focus at work. Oh yeah, yeah. Because actually, I do that. I, I have playlists for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I do that too. Actually, uh, the funny thing is, um, when I first so when I first uh, came into the sound environment, I I didn't I didn't used to listen to that, and I had a I had a colleague uh, who was listening to rain sounds to help her to help her focus, and I thought it was a bit weird. It was like, isn't that a bit depressing? To like, and actually, I tr I tried it, uh, and uh, and more and more, I thought it was really really working, because the thing is like when you listen to normal song songs. Uh, really, they have been composed to catch your attention. Like that's the whole point of pop music, right? To catch your attention. And uh, if you want to focus, that's the opposite, the opposite effect of what you're looking for. You want something that's actually going to be a background noise that's going to mask everything else, so you can really focus on what you're doing. And that was our, that's what our app does. And possibly with enough variety too. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. otherwise, it gets boring. Yeah. You know, I think I'll in the show notes. I'm, I'm going to post my Spotify uh, playlist that's called "Work Dimitri Work." <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what you should do? You that? should go on our beta, create a scene, <laughs> create, create an ambience, and post it as well. Let's do that. We'll do that too. That sounds good. <laughs> or you can send us a link too to, to, yeah, a, yeah. to a scene as well. That'd be awesome. Because because the idea on our app is that not only do you uh, create your own music, but you post Post it, and then everybody else, all the other users, can see it, listen to it, and personalize it. Like if they like your, if you like your scene, they just hit play and listen to it. But they might just say, "Oh, perhaps I'd like to hear these, uh, this instrument a bit louder or less," and they can personalize it as, uh, as it goes. But we, we want to make it a bit of a, of a of a sharing tool, so that what you create can be accessible for everybody else. And will there be any other kind of social interaction? Yeah, definitely. So we have in the beta because it's just a beta version. We haven't add all the uh, comment sections and like all the following this creator and everything. But but we'll definitely add that. Yeah, so. sounds good. Well, this is cool. So let's broaden out a little bit. Um, when you think about the music technology landscape or maybe the audio landscape mm -hmm. in your case, I don't know. What are the things that get you most excited? Well, definitely artificial intelligence, right? <laughs> That's what I work in. Um, so basically, on that, I think what you need to imagine is that. For us, creating music has always been a far process of a, a musician uh, type that playing notes on, a, on an instrument. And more and more with neural network, what you get is you actually have uh, machines that are capable of learning how to create music. That means that they don't just like uh, do what you tell them to do. They can actually create something new by themselves. And I think that's really exciting because it just opens up so many more possibilities for creation. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of that come across, c kind of come across our desks, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, and it's interesting to see not only what the possibilities of creation are, but also what the kind of social values are around music creation and where ownership lives and how people interact. Mm -hmm. And also flipping the whole concept of performer and listener on its head, yes. where the listener becomes part of the creation process, too. Definitely, I think that's 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 really uh, that's how the industry is going to go, in my opinion. Which is, we're going to go from something where you have music being a final product, where a musician spending I don't know like uh, several hours just creating a, a, a track and the track is done, to something where the music is constantly evolving. Uh, it's much more easy to create music because you have algorithm doing all the all the hard work of the uh, harmony. 
So now what's going to be more, actually more and more the focus of the creator will be actually uh, setting up this, uh, this algorithm, trying to put some context behind the music that's being, that's being generated uh, and everything else. So that, that makes it much more accessible actually to more people. Cool. So um, at, at, on this podcast, a lot of times we talk about kind of how there's oftentimes tension building beneath the surface that maybe the, the mass culture, everybody's not necessarily seeing, but all of a sudden something shifts in the landscape. I'm curious if you have, from your perspective, what are some rumblings that you think the music industry needs to be thinking about? Well, so the, this, art, this uh, basically augmented composer or a neural network capable of creating music is, is something that's going to change the industry prof profoundly because it means that, that suddenly you'll have so many more people capable of creating music. You have music everywhere, like way more than we currently have. And that's going to have some impact on the, how people listen to music, what kind of music they listen. Do you think, let's say, what if you were a record label mm -hmm. with a business model that was starting to shift and, uh, or maybe an artist with trying to make a living with, with music, what would be your reaction to what you just said? I think, I think uh, artists have nothing to worry about to some extent because I think although um, algorithm can create music, people are not really interested into uh, music just for music. And it sounds like uh, there are currently uh, things available. Like if you go on YouTube and you you you, you type uh, data bot, for example, you get a YouTube channel that constantly stream uh, death metal, uh, and that is AI, AI generated. So I mean, the music that's being played is created by an algorithm. There aren't that many people who actually listen to that because we like more. Uh, and so the music in itself is not is sometimes not, not enough. So uh, having a composer that's behind or that's putting some vision and some context uh, on, the, on, the, um, on the musical track is really adding value. So I think composers have nothing to worry about. So when you say um, putting some context around it, you're talking about the visuals, the, the stories behind yeah. the music and so forth. Uh, I, mean, I mean, like you follow an artist because you like its music or his or her music, but not just for that. I mean, there's all that goes, all the thing that goes behind it. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, uh, um, this is your first Meetem. Uh, you, you were a participant in the Meetem Lab startups. Uh, there were over 200 startups that competed. So you're in the top 20 from that competition. <laughs> Don't flatter me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm curious, what's what's one thing that you've e either already gotten out of being at Meetem or that you're hoping to get that would have a really uh, great impact on Lenofi? Well, so it's really the first time that we're coming out into a bit of a, of a, of a, a public event to show our app. So what I'm mostly excited about is trying to uh, get people to uh, try our app. So we haven't we haven't had the the app yet actually for uh, for today's event. But uh, uh, if you can go like on our on our Facebook page or our Instagram page, just tap like Lonofi uh, on uh, on Instagram and Facebook, and you'll be uh, you'll, you'll you'll get access to the beta version if you want to, and you'll be aware as soon as the app is released. So you're looking for users and feedback. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, great, good. And because because like it's a work in progress, so we're constantly uh, adding new sounds, adding new features, and correcting what we have. So the more people use it and tell us, well, that is good, but perhaps this is not good. That is very useful for for us. Right, great. So um, we're going to wrap up here shortly, but I wanted to ask you: Are there other events, conferences, competitions that you're either planning to go to or that you've already been involved with? Um, you know, we have a very diverse and broad set of uh, listeners, and I was like. You know, when I land someplace else and someone else lands from someplace else, great to connect around other ideas and tips. But w one thing that's useful is finding out if there's other events that you like or that you're hoping to go to to help uh, uh, some of our listeners. Uh, also, I'd, I'm definitely interested in to going to more of the uh, tech events that are going, that are going to happen like, this year. So you have like a slush um, uh, at some point, that's probably like a, a, a South by Southwest as well, which would be pretty interesting. So I, I, I'll be looking to try to go to these events. Yeah, in the last few South by Southwest, I've seen um, some yoga sessions in the mornings, <laughs> and uh, I think you could do a you could do a calm yeah definitely listening session there. <laughs> I'll be glad, <laughs> and also like uh, I, I think I would have liked to be there this year because uh, they had like some a pretty impressive Game of Thrones stand, like where, where we're donating your blood and it was like donate for the throne with like uh, costumes and makeup. It was just amazing to see. I would have loved to be there. You never know what's going to be at South by Southwest. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty insane. So definitely hope you can, hope to see you there ne next year. Um, we always have a great time there. Um, before we wrap up, one last thing. Uh, we haven't talked about the name and I know mm -hmm. that you pronounce it a little different than me. Um, but what is Lonofi? How do you say it and, and what does it mean? Well, I mean, uh, in French, we say it Lonofi, but Lonofi is pretty good as well. I mean, just call it the way you want. <laughs> as yeah. as I think as you know what to refer to. I think I, th I was thinking like hi-fi, like high yeah. fidelity. Yeah, uh, but uh, but like, um, that's actually a good thing. But 
that's not how we got the idea from. Uh, we got the, uh, the idea from, uh, from uh, Lerno, which is actually a now Hawaiian goddess uh, for well-being. Nice. And what's the fi? Uh, the fi is just the uh, <laughs> it's just there for the pleasure. <laughs> yeah, awesome, great. Well, Ed, thank you so much for um, for joining us on the Music Tectonics podcast. Well, it was my pleasure. Appreciate it. I hope you get lots of great feedback, users, and interest in, in what you're working on. And, yeah, I hope uh, so. <laughs> appreciate all your your sharing and tips and ideas here too. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Music Tectonics. If you could please hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcasting service. It's whatever you're listening to right now so that you can keep up to date not only with Music Tectonics at Meetem, but this is an ongoing podcast and we always try to bring uh, interesting interviews from the music technology space. And also check out musictectonics.com where you can sign up for our newsletter and find out not only about additional podcasts, blog posts, but you can also get a $50 discount for our Music Tectonics conference, which is taking place October 28th and 29th in Los Angeles. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more from Music Tectonics at Meetup. You're listening to Music Tectonics.